have the member's motion before us. Oh, Councillor Holliday. Yes, you, you did second the motion. I, I will not grandstand. Grand and I know I'm a tough act to follow what we just heard, but I, I just want to say it's a good motion. It was a couple of litmus tests for me. The first was uh, when I was approached to second it, I had to go to the policy because I didn't believe that I didn't actually have to submit receipts and that I could bill alcohol if I was on a trip. And so I think this is correcting a flaw in our policy of something that you would expect to do. Um, well, it says here that this is making alcohol an ineligible expense. And, and that's what the motion is. And the second test is, is if I asked somebody on the street whether it was appropriate to uh, not submit in, uh, receipts for the expenses that I incurred, and to charge alcohol, I think they would tell me that it is inappropriate. So I'm, uh, I just think it's a good, it's a technical motion, it's a good motion, it is just making our policy consistent, and it's what we would expect of leaders in other levels of government, orders of government, I think we should follow the same, that's all, fairly straightforward. Well, if, he goes. it should maybe be referred to staff to report. Councillor. Count, hold on, hold on, hold on. Councillor Ainsley to speak. So the, the one clause, I'm not speaking, I'm point of order. The, the one recommendation is that alcohol not be charged. My understanding is we can't charge it. So is so this is out of order, I believe. Okay, according to the clerk, there is one part of the policy that allows you to buy alcohol. For what purpose, please? If I hold on, hold on, can I have the clip? Okay, Julie, do you want to comment on it? Okay, hold on. The clerk will read the uh, read the policy. There is one exception left in the policy, which I believe speaks to when you are t entertaining visitors for dinner. That is it. That's the only part that's left. Okay, Councillor Councilor Burnside to speak. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I'm going to be very quick. I don't even know why this is being debated. Um, well, no, actually, Councillor Carroll, my position is the opposite. Uh, most conferences that I'm sure council members go to, food is provided. At the end of the day, at the end of the day, even if it's not, there is a basic principle of accountability. We're supposed to show leadership here and showing, coming back with receipts like we do for our office expenses is totally, totally appropriate. And you know, anyone that wants to argue against it, well, I guess you'll be reading yourself about yourselves in the paper tomorrow. Okay. Mayor Tory. Well, I, I, I'm, I am new here, and therefore I may be misunderstanding, but I think the point of mentioning the alcohol is, in fact, Madam Speaker, that if you can have this per diem, and if you can spend it as you wish and don't have to account for it, in fact, you could use it to buy alcohol. And if the principle that's at play is uh, that you can't buy alcohol with public money, then, in fact, the, the, the point of the motion is correct. I wanted to make a different point, however. I'm assuming, I wasn't here when this policy of $100 per day was put in place. I'm assuming that the reason it was put in place was because actually somebody thought about the administration of the government and the fact that it costs more and takes more time. And this is the kind of thing where, where I, I believe, and I will support my friend, uh, Councillor DiCiano, in what people accused him of grandstanding and this and that. Councillor Ford, and he's not here, but Councillor Ford makes a meal, if you'll pardon the expression, out of this kind of stuff. Where what he's implying is that people around here, either by having this policy, have done something wrong, or by using this policy, are doing something wrong. And he uses it to get headlines and to grandstand. The word was absolutely correct, except it was used in a way that didn't suggest that's what he does. And I take some offense at that. Sometimes it's directed at me. I take offense even when it's not done, because it doesn't contribute to intelligent discourse. 
And I do think, uh, again, we should perhaps have somebody uh, have a look at what the cost is just of the time of the staff and the, the time of the staff, not just in the public service to process these accounts, but in members' offices, because I think if you added it up, uh, I, I, I suspect, like me, there are other members in this uh, room that don't take the per diem, and that's a personal choice that I make in the sense that I figure I have to eat and, and whatever. But uh, there are others who do, and I don't criticize them for that. Not everybody can, can, you know, can, can afford to adopt these kinds of approaches I do. But I think what we've got to get over in here is this notion that somebody's a villain and somebody's a devil. There's always a devil and a villain. And Mr. Ford, with greatest of respect, is the lead artist at doing that. And we've got, we should maybe just have somebody, and I'm not sure how you go about doing this procedurally, have a look at this and say, does it, is it going to cost us more and cause more bureaucratic hassle to go back to what I presume was the old way of doing it? Is the per diem still appropriate? And if there's a loophole with respect to alcohol, well then, we have to either deal with that on the basis that people trust us uh, to do the right thing or some other basis. But I just wanted to say that because I did, because I just think we spend so much time on this stuff. And frankly, with the greatest of respect, Councillor Karajanis, he starts it. And if he didn't start it by putting this motion on the order paper to begin with, and maybe instead ha saying we want to have an intelligent discussion about this kind of stuff instead of this sort of act activity, then we'd get these meetings done sooner. And I'm sorry I'm taking up your time now. And we would have a lot less acrimony between ourselves. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I the Councillor Carroll. Madam Speaker, I would, I would beg my colleagues to recall that the very, one of the very first things that the uh, mayor in the last term of office did was ask his deputy mayor, Douglas Holliday, to review all expense policies, travel policies, basically all House committee policies, and he sat focus group after focus group after focus group with every one of us and his goal his overarching goal was that we never be scandalized by a bevota $16 glass of orange juice that we not waste council services time that we stay within the, the, the private sector guidelines and less some and he wanted to get us pinned under that somewhat and he made an exhaustive study of this. Deputy Mayor Doug Holliday. He was guided by, the, not, oh, come on, that's who did this. That's who did this review. And it took up hours and days and weeks of council services time to execute that re review. Do we really need to do it in every single term of office? We're not even, no one's asked for any inflationary increase. We're simply asking to continue to abide by a policy that has worked and was reviewed by someone who I think we can all say whose goals of, of, of savings and efficiency for low those many decades he was in office were laudable. Please do not vote for this motion, allowing Mayor Ford to stay on brand Councilor and Ford. engage in the Councillor Ford, Councilor Ford in the former same mayor, old, same mayor, old cir mayor, circus. That would. Councillor Layton. I just wanted to very quickly say that I, I think that uh, that our mayor is on the right track here. That we may be spending more time and money. Uh, discussing these items and and filling out paperwork uh, rather than actually getting on with business and I'll just point to one example um, I last week signed no less than four pieces of paper authorizing a dollar and 12 cents be spent on a postage and I'm sure all of you get them I'll, I'll look at it and go you're kidding me right and that's like the, because we've gone down this road uh, we, we end up with these one dollar and twenty cents authorizations for postage and so let's get on with the business of of council and i really like that our uh, mayor tory used the uh, he started it uh uh argument in his in his speech uh, i we're gonna have to try to figure out good times to bring that one up again Councillor Cressy. 16 seconds. Uh, I agree with much of what's been said. I just I feel that if you're traveling on the public dime, you should submit receipts for it. I'll be subverting the motion. I, I'm yes, sure I it was City Hall business. Okay. Maybe personal. On the motion, recorded vote.
<laughs> Councillor Matlow, please. Mayor Tory, please. The motion does not carry. The vote is 15 to 16. Oh, wow. You vote. You voted yes for the member's motion. You can, you can. You want to reopen it? The mayor is at wants it reopened. So can somebody move? Okay. He voted yes. No. I know. I, I'm saying yes. So we need somebody that voted Councillor Grimes moving to reopen. All in favor? Okay, can you give can you give me a member of council that can move that? Councillor Ainsley. Yes, I'm moving to reopen. Okay. To reopen, Councillor Ainsley recorded vote. Councillor Perusa has asked for it. This is to reopen. You have to vote yes for this. This is to reopen. Oh, one more item. Councillor Layton, please. <laughs> Councillor Mahevic, please. Councillor Davis, please. <laughs> Councillor Mahevic, please. Thank you. The motion to reopen carries 29 to 2. Okay, so now we're voting on the member's motion that's before us. Can we, can we put it on the screen? It's there. That's what we're voting on. Recorded vote. Councillor Karajanis, please. Councillor Baranker, thank you. You're voting on what you see on the screen. The motion does not carry. The vote is 12 to 19. All right, our last item is members motion 1145.